You might have seen the Andrew Huberman expose in New York Mag by now. I was quoted in one paragraph on a very specific topic that I'd like to address. First, I'll say that this story really is about the women that he was juggling, and you can make your determinations about his behavior. Uh, I would read the entire article to better understand that, so I don't want to distract what the bigger picture is about. The reason I was involved is because I've talked about the fact that he often says things on his podcast or talks about his sponsors in ways that don't necessarily match up to the science, and AG1 is only one example of that. Now, I am a journalist, not a field expert in any medical field, but every time I was going into some investigation about this, I did talk to field experts about their area of expertise. When it comes to AG1, look, supplements are pretty much unregulated here in America. You can make all sorts of health claims, performance claims, optimization claims about them, and then just have a small disclaimer on your website that no one reads and you don't necessarily need the science to back it up. Now, AG1 has said we have the science to back it up, so I reached out to them with three simple questions and I will update you when and if they respond. First, AG1 is a proprietary blend, meaning they do not have to list dose levels on the supplement packaging. That creates a lot of consumer confusion because you don't know what you're actually getting when you take the scoop out of the pouch. So I asked them for the scientific literature that shows what they're claiming with the ingredients matches up to their dose levels. As a parallel example, CBD is often touted as this wonder drug, and yet most studies have shown that it's efficacious when combined with tea. And from the dozens of studies that I've read about CBD, it usually begins its efficacy at 400 milligram doses, whereas when you buy a dropper bottle, the recommended dose is usually 10 to 20 milligrams. That's why dose matters. Second, in the article, AG1 responded to New York Magazine about the synergy between the ingredients. That is usually a wellness buzzword that sounds nice but doesn't actually mean anything biologically. So I asked them for any literature about the synergy between their ingredients. We'll see if they provide it. Finally, and I've reported on this before, I cannot find any page on AG1's website that lists the contraindications to medical prescriptions and health conditions with their ingredients. Now, you can hate pharma all you want, and I have so many problems with for-profit healthcare here in America, but every time you get a prescription, you will get a packet of contraindications, health risks, all sorts of issues and problems and dose levels that are required by law to be included in that packet. When you go to a drugstore to buy ibuprofen or aspirin, you will find all sorts of literature, very small print on those boxes that is required to be there. Supplements? Not at all, not required. But if you're going to make health claims and then not list the contraindications, you are putting people at risk unless the dose level is so low that it wouldn't actually cause a contraindication. But then what is that dose level actually doing for you in the first place? So that's why I'm involved in the article. That's what I wanna know from AG1. I have emailed them. I'll update you when I hear back.